Good morning, families. Kathleen here from the Bozeman Public Library, and welcome to Story Time with me. So glad you could come, and please share with your friends that we're doing this twice weekly. There'll be a new Story Time by Cindy on Wednesdays, and I will deliver one on Friday mornings. And we always have a have a craft for you to come by the library to pick up the supplies for. We're also working on something called uh, preschool take bags. That's not a very good name. We're, we're still coming up with a name. Anyhow, we're making these great bags um, with different themes for different age groups and the one we're working on currently is for preschoolers and it's all about math. So feel free to come in the library and pick one of those up and it'll be a great um, set of activities and fun things you can do with your preschooler all around math. So let's get started with story time. Um, I'm going to do the theme of harvest because usually around this time of year we harvest our vegetables and our fruits from our gardens and our orchards and it's such a wonderful time of year to talk about um, all those wonderful vegetables and how grateful we are for such wonderful food. I've got some great books for us today. The first one I'm going to read is called The Turnip. This is by Jan Brett. You might know her, she does so many books. The Mitten, The Hat, she's got tons of books out there. And this one's about harnessing a turnip. I must thank um, G.P. Putnam and Associates, the um, publisher, for letting me read this to you today. And you'll notice with Jan Brett's books, her illustrations are just beautiful. And I've always loved her illustrations. And the fun thing about her books is that they tell a story on the side. Do you see right here? So as I'm reading, you'll watch the different um, margins and you'll see kind of a behind the scenes stories taking place. So here we go, the turnip. This is based on an old folktale called the enormous turnip. Here we go, I want you to see that first page before I read it. Let's turn this a little bit. Here we go. All right, here we go. Badger Girl was weeding the vegetable patch when she saw something strange growing in the garden. Can you guess what that might be? Probably the turnip. It was the biggest turnip she had ever seen. Turnip soup, turnip pie, Badger Girl said. How delicious. Now, remember I told you about you can see things going on? Looks like that's the dad. Well, that's a bear family, actually. And then over here we have a rooster. So we'll watch and see if the rooster's gonna be next. One autumn morning, the air turned chilly. It was time to pick the vegetables and pull up the giant turnip. But when Badger Girl got to the giant turnip, she could not pull it up. With all her might, here comes the rooster. And then we can see who's next. Do you see who's next? The badger, looks like, looks like badger dad. Oh, let me help, badger boy offered. Oh, it was badger boy, not badger dad. Let me help, badger boy offered. Hang on to me and my strong arms will pull it right out. They tugged and tugged, but the turnip stayed in place. Who's next? Oh, it looks like Mama Badger, maybe. Let's see who that is. Children, Mother Badger called. I can wrench that turnip out with a twist and a snap. Watch and learn. But the turnip remain firmly rooted. It's a root vegetable and most of it's underground, kind of like a carrot. Father Badger ambled over. You'll see how easy it is when I take over, he chortled. Nothing happened. Who's next? Mm, looks like hedgehog. Oh, a snowflake fell from the sky and then another and another. Once the earth froze, they would not get that turnip out until spring. Hedgy, that's the hedgehog, Hedgie was most fond of roasted turnip. I know what to do. I'll stick my prickles in the turnip, 
we'll all hold hands and give it the old heave ho. You see them pulling? There he is. Look at all the people pulling. But the turnip didn't heave and it didn't hoe. Mr. Ram, on his way back to town, smiled smugly. You country bumpkins don't have the right equipment. I'll hook it with my horns. So there he is, hooking his horns into that turnip. They're all pulling, they're all pulling. Pull, pull, pull. But the turnip didn't budge. Oh my goodness, look what's next. Look, I'm trying to get that glare off of there, sorry. Look at, is that a pony or a horse? Vanya, the horse stopped by. I am mighty and strong, he whinnied. Hitch my harness to that tasty turnip. And we'll be eating it mashed and salted before it gets dark. The harness jangled, but when all was settled, the giant turnip was still in the ground. Who's coming next? Rooster? Rooster? Do you think a tiny little rooster can pour out that, pull out that giant turnip? There he is. A cocky little rooster had been watching all along. He had just found, or excuse me, he had just had a close call with a cooking pot and was looking for a new place to live. Rooster strutted over. Make room, make room, he crowed. He took the turnip up in his beak and pulled. Close up. What do you predict might happen? Oh my goodness, that's why there were bears. Can you see where this is taking place? So bears usually live in a den. Sometimes they dig down under. I see some stairs here. I wonder if these stairs go up to the earth. And this is the bottom of that beautiful turnip. It's in the bear's living room. Down in their winter den, the bears found the giant turnip in their bed. Up, up, and away, they shouted. I think they might be pushing it. The turnip flew out of the ground with the rooster flying high. So did the rooster pull that out? No, the bears pushed it up. Time for turnip pancakes, browned in butter for all, Mother Badger sang out, waving her frying pan. <laughs> Look how big that turnip is, huge. Badger Girl put out their best yellow chair for the rooster up here. Soon the sizzling crispy turnip pancakes were ready. Oh, here's a picture of those turnip pancakes. Rooster, you are invited to stay with us as long as you wish, Father Badger announced. After all, when would we ever meet such a useful fellow again? <sighs> That's funny. They thought he did it, and I think he thought he did it too. Let's see, I've got another book. Let's read this one next called Rainbow Stew. Has anyone ever had a stew? It's kind of like a soup, but it's a little thicker. And as you guessed from the cover, can you guess how they're gonna make their rainbow stew? Looks like they're harvesting vegetables. They've got a big bushel bag, bushel basket full of, let's see, what do we have? Cucumber, tomatoes, peppers, maybe some spinach. I see some lettuce, and carrots. I guess you wouldn't put lettuce in a, in a soup. This wonderful book is by Catherine Falwell. She did the illustrations and she was the author who wrote the um, story. And thank you so much to Lee and Lowe Books, the publisher, for allowing me to read this to my friends today. Oh, look at these kids waking up. Stretch, wiggle, sniff, and giggle. We scramble from our beds. Grandpa's making pancakes for all his sleepy heads. Now you'll notice in this book, there's a lot of rhyming words. Rhyming words in here, we did um, bed, head, said. We scramble from our beds, favorite sleepy heads. Do you hear that rhyming? 
Just like hat, cat, sat, mat, those are rhyming words. We love to visit Grandpa. It's always so much fun. He lets us play outside all day so we can jump and run. Whimper sigh, cloudy sky. Is it too wet to play? We don't want to stay inside because of a rainy day. Grandpa smiles and says to us, I know what we can do. Let's go and find some colors for my famous rainbow stew. Splish splash. No glare, there we go. Splish, splash, puddle, dash, we bounce right out the door. We're off to find some red and green, yellow, orange, and more. Grandpa shows us how to move between, between each garden row. Lifting up the drippy leaves, we see colors grow. Do you see any vegetables you know? I see some eggplants, some beans or peas. Drip. Drop, shake, and hop. Here are lots of greens. Spinach, kale, and cucumbers. Zucchinis, peas, and greens. Or beans. Beans and greens rhyme, don't they? We find some yellow pe peppers and a purple cabbage head. We tug on rosy radishes and pop them from their bed. Slip, slide, squishy, slide. We snip off red tomatoes. We dig into the dark, wet dirt and pull out brown potatoes. We jump around like grasshoppers and buzz around like bees. We creep along like ladybugs and we all get muddy knees. Pull, pick, gather quick. We need more for the stew. Grab some orange carrots and a purple eggplant too. She's got the eggplant. Our basket's full of colors. We park it by the door. Our clothes and boots are dripping, making puddles on the floor. Grandpa helps us wash our hands and dries our soggy hair. It's almost time to cook, he says, so find dry clothes to wear. Oh, here they go. Peel, slice, chop, and dice. Colors fill the pot. Stir in herbs and water, and then wait till it gets hot. Let's see here. Grandpa says he's proud of us. We're such terrific cooks. While the stew is heating, we have time to read some books. Let's see. Howl, yowl, tummies growl. We're a hungry bunch. It's time to serve up heaping bowls of rainbow stew for lunch. Oh, I love that book. And it says, yum, 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 yum. That's such a fun book. I've made a little copy of a rainbow stew if you would like to make it at home. Can you see that? Rainbow stew recipe. It has the ingredients and the instructions. It has onions, carrots, celery, garlic, broth, tomatoes, potatoes, parsley, thyme, beans, corn, and peas. That is definitely a rainbow stew. So you can pick this up at the library along with the craft that I'll show in just a moment. We have one more book before. Book for us today called Up, Down, and Around. And what I like about this book is it talks about which plants grow above the soil, like this is the soil, and which grow down below. I bet you can think of a below, a root vegetable that's orange. It starts with the C, K, K, and it rhymes with parrot, carrot. This is written by Katherine Ayers illustrated by Nadine Bernhardt Westcott. And let me check really quick, the publisher, Candlewick Press. Thanks for letting me read this to my friends. Up, down, and around. This is a scarecrow. Some kids don't know what a scarecrow is, 
and people will make a scarecrow out of old clothes and a hat and stuff it full of straw, and it scares off the crows from eating the garden. But looks like it's not really working here, does it? I don't know that they really work. Anyways, here we go. In the dirt, we'll dig a row, drop some seeds, and watch them grow. Dirt piles up and seeds go down. Water splashes around and around. Corn grows up. Carrots grow down. You see that? Oh, there's some worms or some kind of grub. So do you see how the carrots are under the ground growing? And do you see how the corn is above? Cucumbers climb around and around. They grow above ground. There's one right there. Peppers grow up. Potatoes grow down. You can see those potatoes are underground and the peppers <coughs> are above ground. Sorry. Pumpkins vine around and around. Pumpkins grow above ground, don't they? Broccoli grows up, beets grow down. Green beans wind around and around. Do those grow above or below? Above, that's right, they grow above the ground. Okra grows up, this is okra. Onions grow down, underground. Tomatoes twine around and around. Fresh and tasty, get a bunch. Pick some, pull some. Look what they're pulling. Carrots, cucumber, tomatoes, corn. Let's have lunch. Wow, that's kind of similar to the rainbow stew. When you think back to our book called The Turnip, does that grow above? Above the ground or below the ground? That's right, remember it was below the ground. It was way down in the bear's house. Well, I've got a fun little craft for you guys to do at home. Um, you can pick up these carts at the library. And look, it says where, the top, it says where does it grow, above or below? So what you'll do is you'll get a piece of paper and then you'll get the brown, which is the earth. And actually, I think the paper I have for you today is gonna be blue. And you'll get one of these sheets. Where does it grow? Above or below? And let's look at those really quick. Let's see. Tomato, above or below? I see them right there. Potatoes, they grow underground. Carrots, underground. Lettuce, above. What's that? Beans grow above. How about a pumpkin? You can see those when they're on the vine. Corn, above. And is that a turnip below? So you'll color those, cut them out, and then glue them on your paper. I also made some worms and rocks down in my soil to remind me that that's the soil. You can come pick that up at the library. We'll have those for the next couple of weeks. And I hope to see you again soon. Thanks so much for joining me.